AEW Call Legend did its lowest rating in three months, its second lowest rating of the year, and now we are going to look and see who is responsible for making up those numbers, or should I say, those lack of numbers. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling for your AEW Collision Quarter Early Rating Breakdown. So, before we get into this, I know that there's a few AEW fans saying that there was hockey on, NHL, that's why the rating's low, that's why the rating's poor. I mean, you can't have it both ways. You can't brag about getting over 600k a few weeks ago when it was simply only because of basketball, but then whip out every single excuse under the sun when the rating is poor and there happens to be another live sport on TV. I personally don't care what is on TV. It's not like this is the Super Bowl. It's some hockey game. It's some throwaway fucking hockey game. I don't care if it's hockey, baseball, basketball. It's not like it's the NBA final game seven. It's not like it's the Super Bowl or the World Cup. Unless you've got something of that magnitude, then you shouldn't be really complaining about ratings. You shouldn't be complaining about what you're up against and what the opposition is. It's weak. And I mean that from both companies, man. It's so fucking pathetic. Oh, we, we can't possibly get higher than a 1.5 on a Monday night because football's on. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. I mean, Raw used to get millions. Raw used to get four, five, six million when there was football on, right? So this whole excuse that now, like, a 1.3 million is a good rating for Raw is garbage. And you know when NFL starts, we're going to hear those excuses from WWE and WWE fans, just like we hear the excuses from AEW. If you're losing ratings because there's another live sport on, then that means your show fucking sucks. Because if your show was better than the live sport that was currently on, people would be watching the wrestling show. If people are watching the live sport over the wrestling show, then that tells you that the wrestling show is not very good. So instead of just making excuses, maybe make the shows better. But anyway, I digress. Collision this week got 378,000 fuel. So like I said, it's the second lowest collision of the year. And it's a bit of a downward step here for AEW but we're going to look at it we're going to break it down we're going to see who's responsible and we're going to see who got the lowest quarter of the show it's kind of funny though because spoiler alert <laughs> the elite were in it so yeah anyway let's move into quarter one eight o'clock eight fifteen. top flight versus brian danielson and claudio cascanoli starts at four hundred and eighty nine thousand. we then go into quarter two eight fifteen to eight thirty p.m we get the continuation of top flight versus blackpool combat club we get a danielson live promo and then we get the beginning of osprey versus lee moriarty this lost 19 percent so Starting off at 489,000 and then quarter two, 396,000. So almost 100,000 lost here. And that's a lot. When you're starting off with less than half a mil, to lose 100,000 after one quarter, that's a hell of a lot. Obviously, the more fewers you have, then losing 100,000 isn't that big of a deal, but the less fewers you have, then losing 100,000 is going to be a bigger deal. So that's not a good look there at all. Going into quarter three, Osprey versus Moriarty continued. We got post match with Roderick Strong and Mercedes Monet video. Uh, Brian Cage in the Gates of Agony versus Even Rivers and the Foro Twins. Who the fuck are they? And then we got a Cage live promo. Christian Cage to be exact. This went up 2%, so 404,000. Uh, quarter 4, 8.45 to 9pm. The continuation of the Christian Cage promo. Gates of Agony came out, followed by Swerve Strickland. Uh, then we got a backstage Swerve Strickland promo. And then it was KM versus Daniel Garcia. I've no idea who KM is. Can't remember watching the show. Don't know if I'd watched the show. That's how memorable it was. If anyone can tell me who KM is, the initials KM. The only guy I can think with the not even the initials, but I know Commander. I mean, but surely you wouldn't shorten Commander to KM. Like I don't know who KM is, but whatever. Um, unless it's somebody Knight. I mean, could it be Knight something? Who cares? Lost seven percent. Down three hundred and seventy six thousand. So yeah. Uh, moving into quarter five, nine o'clock to nine fifteen. Dax Harwood versus Tom Tommy Billington, the new Dynamite Kid or the Dynamite Kid's son or whoever this guy is. Oh yes, big Dax Harwood. All I hear 
is FTR or draw as well. Not here because they lost another 6%. So we're now down at 354,000. Moving into quarter six, 9.15 to 9.40 p.m. Jack Perry, Young Box, and Christopher Daniels cut a backstage angle. Then we get a Daniels backstage promo. And then we get Thunder Rosa taking on Robin Renegade. And this lost a whopping 11%. So, we've got three consecutive losses here in the last three quarters. 7%, 6%, and 11%. Pish, absolute shite. So, yeah, quarter six did 315,000. Now, are the bucks to blame? You might say no. But the next quarter that had the continuation of Rosa versus Renegade went up 8%. So, I'm not necessarily saying it's the bucks to blame, but they do happen to be in the quarter that had the lowest amount of views for the show, so you make of that what you will. Uh, quarter 7, it was Rosa versus Renegade continued. We then got Johnny TV, we got Taya Falkyrie backstage, and we got the beginning of Adam Copeland versus Kyle O'Reilly. This went up 8% to 339,000. Quarter 8, 9.45 to 10 p.m. was Adam Copeland versus Kyle O'Reilly continued. Uh, this went up 2% to 345,000 and then we got a 4 minute overrun from 10 o'clock to 10.04 which went up 16%, also went up 16% in the key demo as well. It finished with 401,000 fuels and 189,000 fuels in the 18 to 49 demo. So, I mean, the way I see it is from quarter 4 to quarter 6 we had three big losses in a row and just look at the people involved in this you know you've got shite like Dax Harwood um the Bucks the elite people that don't matter and then quarter seven quarter eight in the overrun all three of them went up in fuel ship eight percent two percent and sixteen percent and all three of those quarters the two quarters and then the the overrun all three of those segments featured Adam Copeland so it looks like to me Adam Copeland is the guy pulling in the numbers here and the Bucks and the Elite and the likes of Dax Harwood and the women are the people losing the numbers. So uh, yeah, make from that what you will guys, but there's only a couple of draws in my opinion on AEW Collision and they start with the first one, Brian Danielson, and they end with the second one, Adam Copeland. Everybody else... Seems to be losing numbers, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I see there. Uh, Rampage numbers are in as well, but nothing really noteworthy. They were pretty low. Uh, quarter three of Rampage dipped under 300,000, which is not good. It did 295,000, but yeah, Rampage finished with 324,000 overall. So again, down on collision. Overall, they're just not great, like I said. They start pretty strong with Brian Danielson. They finish pretty strong with Adam Cope. And I say strong. I don't I don't mean they're doing good. But what I mean is those two guys are consistently bringing in the best numbers. Are the numbers great? No. The numbers are pretty bad, actually. But those guys are bringing in the best of a bad bunch, okay? I'm not saying Copeland and Brian Danielson are bringing in great numbers. They're not. But they're bringing in better numbers than anyone else. So, it is what it is. And the Bucks seem to be losing more numbers than anyone else. So... Yeah, the elite are not so elite, in my opinion. Anyway, guys, that's it. I'll catch you in the next one. Being Fog Wrestling, thanks for watching, and peace.